Welcome back to It's Down to Business with Jack Miller. Call us at 305-541-2350. Follow us on Facebook at Jack Miller Down to Business or on Twitter at HJackMiller1. Hello, everyone. This is Jack Miller again with my buddy Todd Cohen. Todd, I don't know about you, but we've had all kinds of guests on the show, literally ranging from politicians to people in the adult toy Authors, business. Authors. Yeah, ev- everything. everything in between. We're going to have a comedian in two weeks. But I get so excited when I talk to an entrepreneur. Right. Because to me, entrepreneurs put it all on the line. They sacrifice their, their everything, their whole being is about building a business. Well, you're going to love our next guest. Though. I know. I'm super excited. And uh, somehow, Misha, I'm genuinely excited about the engineering business. Well, we went from, you know, probably the stud of all engineers down in South Florida to someone who engineers and created his own tomato, tomato sauce. sauce business. I know. Yeah. So our next guest, we're going to bring him on, is Dave Stauff, who uh, is one of the co-founders of Two Guys Jersey Tomatoes. Dave, are you with us, my friend? Yes. Good afternoon, guys. How are you? Excellent. And you? Doing well. Dave, uh, so to give everyone a little background, Dave, uh, Dave, why don't you give them the background? Tell us within a minute or two how you came to found a company that makes tomato sauce. It's like, it's, it's a little, I don't say unusual. Most guys think about being a doctor, lawyer, a fireman, an astronaut, a porn star, you know. <laughs> you know, how did you come to found, found right. A tomato sauce company. Yeah, so the name of the brand is called Two Guys Jersey Tomato Sauce, and uh, my partner and I came up with the recipe about five years ago. Uh, you know, we saw that there was a market for local products and healthy. Uh, we were always in and out of grocery stores, gourmet markets. People started reading labels, and uh, my partner used to work at a Hunts Point and had access to Jersey tomatoes. Uh, so we went right into my kitchen on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, we started cooking on a Sunday afternoon, and uh, before you know it, uh, we started bottling a tomato sauce. Uh, you know, we, we made samples um, in our bathtub, um, bottled it up, uh, then we found the co-packer, uh, and then we hit the streets. Uh, it's a very competitive market out there, and uh, some people gave us a shot, you know, to put the sauce on the shelves. Did you ever did you ever have aspirations of competing with the ragus and pregos of the world, or is it more of a niche kind of thing when when the niche sauces started to hit the shelves? Yeah, more of the niche. I mean, we can compete. I mean, those are five hundred pound gorillas, and I'm not really sure what they have in the in the jar when they sell for ninety nine cents. Um, you know, our sauce is low sodium, no added sugar, gluten free, kosher, all natural. You can actually pronounce all of the ingredients in our sauce, which is really nice. That's excellent. Now, tell our audience a little bit about why the Jersey tomato. I mean, us being from up in Philadelphia, we, we know all about it, but maybe some people aren't as familiar of those big red treasures. Yeah, so, so we use the plum tomato. I mean, it's a great tomato. Uh, it's, it's really the soil that um, it's grown on. And the best part about it, it's a very sweet tomato. Uh, so we don't need to add any sugar, and there's no um, citric acid in our sauce, where many sauces, when you read the labels, they add sugar and they add citric acid, which really gives it to that burn uh, of an aftertaste. So where can somebody, are you selling them wholesale, retail? How do you sell your product, and how does someone yeah, buy the Yeah, so we, we sell it to uh, gourmet markets and grocery stores all over the country now. Uh, we, we start in the New York metro area with ShopRite, Stop and Shop, Whole Foods, Fairway, a lot of independents. And we just started shipping uh, about six months ago to Kroger nationwide. Um, everybody told us it's a great sauce, it's going to be tough to sell it outside the region. And we kind of proved everybody wrong. Uh, Kroger put us into about 1,420 stores in about 30 states. That's amazing. Congrats. Do you, do you have Thank any you. like stories... You know, maybe of like your first sale that you made or like stories about how you were like living out of your car when you first got started that you want to share? Yeah. So, I mean, when we first started, obviously you have many sleepless nights. Um, You know, the first thing we did was, you know, we started in New York City and um, they pretty much said, listen, shelf space is very tight here. Uh, If you demo the product and it sells, uh, you have shelf space. So my partner and I would sit there for hours uh, if need be, to sell the product. Uh, once we knew that some of the Italian mothers 
bought jarred tomato sauce, we knew we had a good product because a typical Italian does not buy jarred tomato sauce. Okay. They make their own gravy on Sunday afternoons, um, and that's when we kind of knew we had a good, healthy sauce that was priced right. Do you sell through distributors or direct? We sell to distributors. I would like to go direct. Not all retailers uh, have warehouses. You have to use a middleman. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's the way the business works. Is it hard to get a distributor or a good one? It, it, it is hard to get a distributor. They're all the same. They're all mediocre at best. Uh, we kind of look at a distributor to take it from dock A to dock B. That's really it. They don't do any sales. They want you to go out there and get the retailers. So once you get the retailers... Then you could call them, and they will take your product in, hopefully. So are, are there – when I was thinking distributors, I thought that the distributors sold it as well, like at trade shows, things like that. But you're saying they don't? No. I mean, you, you do most of the, the legwork. I mean, they might have a booth at a trade show, but they're not really pushing. I mean, pushing. So nobody a, sells your product better than the people that make it. I hear That's you. It. You, you. You're passionate about it. I mean – we got into nationwide stores not because of a broker or distributor, because of pounding the phones and just being passionate and enthusiastic about what we do. Nice. And I think it goes a long way because we're going up against, as I said, 500-pound gorillas in the marketplace uh, that have a lot more money than we do. But I think some of these buyers and owners now are starting to see um, that there's some good quality products out there, some new companies, and they're giving them a shot like ourselves. So do you have to buy, and let me back up, if you don't want to answer any of this, I completely understand, but, you, you know, on Shark Tank, they always talk about buying shelf space yeah. and paying up front, which I know could be a fortune for shelf space. Do you get into, right. do you get into that at all? or just? Focus? Yeah, so it's called slotting costs, and a lot of the retailers do it. Uh, it's really a negotiation. Uh, most of them ask for a free case per store, per flavor. Um so that, that's typically how it works with, with the large chains, um, and then uh, they order from there. Um, so usually that first order is usually a wash. Uh, that's typically how it works. Um, but, you know, there are some people like Kroger where there's no slotting fee. They actually do business the right way. Um, you know, they, they like your product. They take it in. They sell it. Everybody makes money. So you don't have to recoup that money. It doesn't take a couple months to recoup that money. But is there better, you know, shelf heights or, or, you know, display areas than others? And if so, how do, how do you get those? I mean, obvi- I mean, listen, everybody wants to be eye level. I mean, that's ideal. Uh, usually start off on the bottom row, and as the product sells, they move it up. Um, if you want to get a display, uh, you, you got to give them a deal. You know, they, they want either buy one, get one, 25 to 30% off. Um, for that. Nothing is free. You want to go into the circular, you need to pay for it. Um, so, you know, half the battle is getting into the store. The next battle is getting it from the shelf to the cart. Uh, and what we do is we do a ton of demos uh, because they get it in, into people's mouth, and then we do promotions. Um, you know, typically our sauce every day is about five ninety nine, which is a high-quality sauce at a moderate price. Usually go on sale at four forty nine, um, and it does very well. What have you been? Uh, what, what, so your your sauce comes through on the Highland, the gourmet stuff, correct? So yeah, you're, we're we're a gourmet, gourmet sauce. sauce. Got gotcha. you, got Highline. Um, are you selling directly to the consumer at all? No, not really. No, I mean we, we do some sales online. It's just a very um, it's not your mark. Product not your mark. Is I that because it's ex- is that because it weighs so much? I mean, how much does like a case of, of jarred sauce weigh? A case weighs twenty eight pounds, uh, but we were proven wrong uh, the first couple months when we started that that we thought it was going to be too expensive. But especially in Florida, uh, where they can't get the sauce right now, hopefully one day soon in a Win Dixie or Publix. Um, People order the sauce by the caseload, uh, and they will pay $50, $60 to ship it because they're foodies, and they really want their Jersey tomatoes, and they can't get them in Florida. So if people want you, you're not in Publix, I think you said, or Winn-Dixie. So if people are listening to this and they want 
your sauce, and they live in South Florida. What should they do? Call or write Publix or go to the manager? Go, go to go to your local store. Tell them that you you would like to buy two guys Jersey tomato sauce. It can go through one of our distributors, which is UNFI or Kehi. It's all set up, um, and that that's really it. You know, that's really what we need to do. We need people to go to the stores and ask for the product because who's better to ask for a product than a customer? Right, and there are so many transplants from that area of the country down here, in especially South Florida, but probably all over the state. So uh, it makes sense that people would actually like and want that sauce. Uh, on that line, how hard is it to get into Costco? Or, or like BJ's or one of those places? Well, it, it's completely... It's a little different of a procedure just because they want a specific pack size mm -hmm. uh, and you have to shrink rack it. So uh, we have a 25-ounce jar. They might want a 32-ounce or a 64-ounce jar. So, And you would have to do one of each. So one marinara, one basil, one fried Diablo. And that's how they would want it packed. Gotcha. Now, what, what are your challenges now that you're up and running? You seem to have some good momentum. You signed a, n a nice deal with Kroger. What are your challenges right now, and, and how many people are working with the two guys? Uh, it's just my partner and I, and then we have a bunch of distributors. Uh, we do all the sales. We, we do all the legwork. Uh, we did have some employees. It's just nobody does it as well as we do, so why not keep our costs down? Uh, that's the way we look at it. Um, so, you know, and then going forward, I mean, it's really they review the pasta sauce category in these major retailers once to twice a year. So you got to find out when the category review is, make sure they get samples. And our biggest thing is just hopping on an airplane and getting in front of them, letting them know we're going to be there for our, our, our cousin's party or something. We're going to be in the area. Can we stop by, introduce ourselves? Uh, typically, we usually bring a hot plate with us. We warm up the sauce regardless of what time it is because we want them to try it. Um, you know, their, their desk is filled with all different kinds of sauces and marinades, and I think the biggest hurdle is getting them to try the sauce because if we can get them to try the sauce, I think we got a good chance of getting into their stores. Do you, Dave, we only have a minute before we take a break, but do you do like the fancy food show conventions and things like that? Yes, we do fancy food show, and then we also have to participate in distributor shows. Gotcha. Um, you know, all, all over the country. And, and do you guys cook yourselves like outside of the business, or is that how this started? Yeah, I do cook. I. I it is a hobby of mine. My wife, I think that's why she might have married me because. I like to cook, and I also clean, uh, so it's a nice package deal she got. He, co he cooks, wow. he cleans, he's self-employed. Dave, the ladies, you, you sound like out. Yeah, I was going to say, sound like the perfect guy. Dave, stick with us for a couple minutes. We have to take a two, three-minute break, and we have a bunch more questions about tomato sauce and growing a business. Yeah, this guy's going to continue to make Jack and I look bad for our wives. I, I, I know. I don't even know how to order out. I'm so bad. We'll take a break now, everyone. Don't turn that dial. We'll be right back. Do you need long-term real estate financing? Gelt Financial is located right here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida and provides 30-year terms with no balloon payment whatsoever on non-owner occupied residential and commercial real estate. With a minimum loan amount of only $75,000 all the way up to $5 million, we provide common sense underwriting and a quick closings. We don't require tax returns whatsoever. Call right now at 561-221-0900. Again, that's 561-221-0900. Did you invest in a non-liquid real estate partnership? Do you want and need liquidity? There's finally an answer. Quick Liquidity is a direct buyer of real estate minority interest and tenants in common investments across the country. To find out if we would buy your non-liquid investment, call us at 561-221-0881 or visit us at quickliquidity.com. That's quickliquidity.com. Welcome back to It's Down to Business with Jack Miller. Call us at 305-541-2350. Follow us on Facebook at Jack Miller Down to Business or on Twitter at HJackMiller1. Hello, everyone. This is Jack Miller with Todd Cohen again, and we're really lucky to have Dave Stoff, who is one of the co-founders of Two Guys Jersey Tomato Sauce. So, Dave, uh, we're talking about 
what it's like to start a tomato sauce company, the obstacles. What have you been your biggest obstacles? Uh, obviously, I would assume it's selling the product and getting it into stores. But, like, how hard was it to find a co-packer and all that stuff? Yeah, I think the hardest thing uh, in the beginning was meeting their minimums. Uh, you know, we, we didn't want to go in and produce too many cases. Um, but then, um, you know, so that was probably our, our biggest obstacle is you have to do a minimum, usually between 500 and 1,000 cases per flavor. Um, so that, that was our biggest obstacle. But then we knew if we produced it, um, we had to get rid of it somewhere. Um, and that really just lit a, uh, a fire underneath us to really get out there and hit the phones and get as many appointments as we can, you know, because at the end of the day, um, it's a numbers game. And the more people we call, the more people we email, the you know, more appointments would turn into, you know, getting the placement on the shelves. So do you have to manufacture the, the, the merchandise first or through the co-packer and then sell it, or do you get the orders and then manufacture it now? No, typically we have a good idea month to month of what our inventory is. Usually when we hit a level in inventory, we go back in um, to produce more. But, I mean, right now is prime time sauce season, so we are producing a lot. Was there a time where, like, you, you had, like, 15 cases of sauce surrounding your bed in your apartment or something? Like, like I don't remember what, what movie or TV show I just saw recently where someone invented something and they had a situation much like you described where there was a minimum they had to produce in the beginning and, and they didn't know where to put it because it needed to be air-conditioned, so they had it in their house. Is, did that ever happen? Yeah, I mean, we, my partner and I, we've had it everywhere. I mean, we've had it in our cars. Uh, we've had it underneath our bed. Um, you know, it's just, you, you know, we didn't really have storage unit in the beginning. So it was like, uh, my parents garage, we, we would house it there. We would back up our cars and load it up, you know? So are, we you, always had, we always had sauce in our car. Gotcha. Are you, beside Kroger's, are you selling to the one and two man gourmet shops? We do sell to a bunch of independent markets, but you know, our bread and butter are the big chain. When you, uh, sh when you shop, right. Uh huh. Well, that's a big one. That's a big one. Fairway, Whole Foods, um, wow. Kroger, and then we go to Ralph's out on the West Coast, King Supers out in Colorado, QFC out in uh, out in the uh, West Coast. Also, um, so we, we do so, you know, all over the country. And the only real region we are not in is your region, the Florida region, and we are looking to get in. So Hopefully. anybody that's listening. Has any insight? Please email us at info at two guys food group .com. Right. Yeah, give out your information again, Dave. Yeah, give, Just... give out your website and your contact information. Yeah, the, the website's two guys food group .com. It has all the stores listed where we sell to. If you put in your zip code or your address, they will all come up. Uh, if they don't sell it in your area, you could also order the sauce online. You could either order a case, you could order six pack or you could order we call it the trifecta one of each flavor so uh, i'm in the finance business and we do some accounts receivable financing so i'm always fascinated with this end of it but i would imagine your business is fairly capital intensive because you have to pay the co-packer then you sell the stuff and you probably don't get paid for 30 or 60 days and along the way you take some credit risk how have you dealt with that whole Again, I don't want to get into the detail, the, the, the confidentiality of your business, but how do you deal with the credit risk that you take when you sell it, the goods? In, in the beginning, uh, we use a factoring company, so that helped us out uh, cash flow. Um, and then we were very fortunate. Um, first couple months in, we did a big deal. We did private label, which is the store brand for A&P. So that really helped us out with cash flow. Um, and how it works is if you want, you can do 2% net 10 days. Uh, so they deduct 2% and you get paid in 10 days. So for a small company in the beginning, uh, that's what we did. And it really helped out our cash flow. With our co-packer, you have terms. Uh, you know, if you're good on your first couple of payments, they'll extend you 30, 45 days. So you match it between your accounts payable and accounts receivable. Correct. 
Gotcha. One thing I'm curious about, how did you sort of arrive at the recipes that you settled on? Who who were who tasted it? How, who helps with quality control? How how do you do that? So, you know, we first started, you know, in my kitchen uh, in New York City, and we really just went to the store and bought a couple cans of Jersey tomatoes. Um, and then, you know, like any chef would do, you know, you add garlic, oregano, olive oil, salt, pepper, and you just taste it along the way with your fingers. I mean, it's really what we did. Uh, we would always have friends over. We would get their opinion uh, of, you know, what um, – what they like, what they didn't like, so on and so forth. And that's really, you know, uh, how we came up with it. I mean, Scott and I, my partner, you know, we're two foodies, so we know when something's good. How did, um, and and, and we, we hit it right on the head. How did you – and we only have like two minutes left. And I, then I, I, so for a minute or less, how, did, how does it play out with you and your partner – in terms of the day-to-day responsibilities? Like, is one more in operations, one in sales, or you both do everything? Uh, Scott's probably a little more operations. I'm more sales. Uh, But at the end of the day, we're a team, you know? So whatever needs to get done, we do it, you know? If if I'm away for a couple of days, he steps up to the plate. and, And you just have to have a partnership that works, and you really have to trust each other. Um, that's really what it comes down to is, is, is trust. Gotcha. Got it. Do you guys have like a timeline in mind or, or a certain revenue hurdle when you would start hiring a staff? Or, or are you... I'll be honest with you. We're in probably about 2,500 stores nationwide. Scott and I handle it ourselves. Um, I don't know if we will ever – we might hire some brokers or some merchandisers along the way. Um but we're able to run the business with the two of us, the trucking company, the warehouse, um, very lean and mean. So it's pretty cool. Do you ever, like, around dinner time, think, you know what? Somewhere in this country there's probably, like, dozens of people eating my sauce. Is that, like, a cool thing? I would think that would be cool. Yes, uh, we do. And uh, when you go to somebody's apartment and you see your sauce in their uh, cupboard uh, or the refrigerator, it's rewarding dave i really appreciate you being with us could you we have like 30 seconds left give out your contact information but i think more important tell again the people in south florida or wherever they are if they want to get your sauce in their local retail or what they should do yeah all you floridians that are listening please go to your Publix, your winn dixie whole foods or your fresh market any of those stores let them know you're interested in the two guys jersey tomato sauce it's low sodium, no added sugar, gluten free, tastes like tomatoes, not like salt, and you'll be very happy. And kosher for my uh, and kosher my circumcised friends. Okay. Da- and what's your contact information? The website, real quick. Uh, we got to go. The website is twoguysfoodgroup.com. If you have any questions about the sauce or any stores that you don't see listed, you can email us at info at twoguysfoodgroup.com. Dave, I really appreciate your time. Hats off. I love entrepreneurs. Yeah, you're best the, of luck. We hope to have you down here soon. You're the spirit of America. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Great show. Thank you, and have a great week, everyone, and almost Merry Christmas. That's it. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to tune in next Thursday at 3 o'clock on 880 The Biz. If you want to send in your questions, comments, or ideas for shows, please email jackmiller at geltfinancial.com. Follow us on Facebook at Jack Miller Down to Business or on Twitter at hjackmiller1. Turn